brand new roof. You can see this is all white, a little shiny. Uh, so Michael and I were just talking about the power crane. I reported earlier, I believe, that they observed that the height of that is 180 feet. I was actually corrected by the power crane operator when I was up there about three weeks ago. Uh, it's about 230 feet is the height of the power crane. I climbed it about three weeks ago uh, at the very top. Uh, it was a pretty incredible view from up there. You want to go up there? I'll take you all up there. Not today. Later <laughs> on. I think I would like it. That'd be so, so cool. So is it 180 or 230? 230 feet. So that first 180 feet I was off. We've also hung an incredible 10 by 15 foot American flag. Just going to see it up there. Uh, it's pretty just a great sight for all of us. Look over the edge of the parapet here. You can start to see the parking garage that's under construction. Again, my team and I are designing and building the parking garage, but at the end, the city of Fayetteville will own the parking garage. So it'll be a five-story parking garage with about 480 parking spaces or so. Again, five stories. They've just poured the second story uh, to the right. Out there, you'll see, uh, I think it's about 60 to 70 construction workers today. This is truly economic development, putting dollars at work, creating jobs, and having some great paying jobs out here. The parking garage, the majority of it will be completed in March 2019, along with the Prince Charles product as well. So our tenants build a park in there as well. Once the parking garage is completed, we will start going vertical on the two buildings above it. Again, one of the buildings will be a high-end hotel. So that'll be a five-story building and 119 rooms. So in total, the uh, that section of the building which faces us will be about a 10-story building. We'll be announcing the brand of that hotel later in November. So we're very excited to announce that. It'll be this brand's first hotel in Fable and really in this region overall. Uh, we're very excited about that brand, that flag. That's a flag we've been targeting from day one. On the other side of the parking garage, and still on top of the parking garage, we'll be building Fable's highest end office building. It'll be about six stories and about 90,000 square feet. We've had tremendous progress in starting to pre-lease in those office uh, spaces over there. Again, uh, the hotel and office building should be delivered around summer 2020. So who's building the hotel? Is that y'all or is that the we hotel? We're building the hotel, okay. we're building the office building. So we're building everything. Okay. If you want to turn around, we can get uh, some great views in the baseball stadium. So again, this is the baseball stadium that the city of Fayetteville will own and the Houston Astros and their to be announced team will be operating. Um, so you can see the main steel structure down there. That is where the grand entrance to the stadium will be and the only entrance to the stadium. The stadium again will hold about 5,200 people. It'll, be, it'll host about 70 home baseball games a year just for the team. But the Houston Astros have committed to uh, host many more events in there other than just baseball. The stadium should be programmed just about year-round. And the train's not going to be an issue, right? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, we're all used to having trains living down here. So the stadium will be, uh, construction will be completed in late March, early April. I don't think there's a firm date on that yet. I do want to make sure people are aware again of the Astros brand launch. This Sunday, November the 4th from 4 to 9 p.m. at Festival Park. The Astros will be announcing who the new team name is. They'll have food trucks out there, beer, merchandise for sale, and they'll have uh, live uh, fireworks, I believe, at 8.45 Sunday evening. Another great reason for people to come on down to Fayetteville and celebrate all the great progress. What time would that be again? From 4 to 9 p.m. on Sunday the 4th. So this was the event that I believe was scheduled for September the 12th. My team and our leasing team will have a large tent at that uh event as well. So if anyone's come on out, learn more about the apartments, see the floor plans, see some renderings, and start to talk about pre leaks and some of the apartments, we'd love to see them. We'll be there too. We'll <laughs> we'll be there for the grand announcement. Absolutely. I can promise you that. Oh man, this is scary. There's oh, so is there this is scary. I don't know if that'll be appropriate for you, Michael. <laughs> So is there going to be, <laughs> are people going to be allowed up here? Like They will have uh, office user here on the 8th floor, which is where the ballroom used to be. Okay. So that office user will have access to this outdoor patio space. So if people like want to throw parties or anything, they can't no, use... No, it's just for the office tent. Okay. Yep. Cut off. We will have some 
um, patio space, outdoor patio space in the hotel and in the office building that you'll be able to see directly in the baseball stadium. Okay. So that would be public space people can use for events as well as the baseball stadium. The Houston Astros will be programming a lot of the spaces they have for events. I believe they've already uh, signed up a uh, retirement ceremony uh, for a great individual at Fort Bragg. He'll be having his retirement ceremony. I believe that'll be the first event inside the baseball stadium. So smaller events can be programmed inside the stadium as well. Who was the saving again for the stadium? I believe it's about 5,200. Uh, they've been increasing capacity due to the tremendous turnout and the tremendous interest in buying tickets for the stadium. So they've increased that over time? I believe they've been increasing a little bit. That is correct. And up there, is that all? That's all just rooftop space. We'll be putting mechanical units up there. Okay. Y'all want to go inside the ballroom? Yeah. yeah and more to order. Have those plans changed inside the ballroom? That'll still be an office space? Yeah. We're currently negotiating with an office tenant right now. want to point out here this is where um, the clarion sign I believe it was most recently used to be the fluorescent bolts at night so this is where we'll be uh, painting the name of the property so we'll go and uh, paint most of this wall black you'll be able to see it driving down um, Hay Street from Haymelt so this this section will be painted black and we'll go back with white letters saying uh, fireproof Hotel Prince Charles uh, that's how it historically used to be uh, you know when it says fireproof you know today that's that's pretty funny but you know, back in the 1920s, most structures were actually built out of wood. This is a steel and concrete masonry building. So we all know the history of the Hotel Lafayette down the street on Hay Street, how that burnt down. Prince Charles never faced that issue because again, it was concrete and steel. So advertising as fireproof was a big deal back in the 1920s and 30s. Hmm. So you still want to keep that, stay, stay on that? That is correct. We'll be uh, bringing that back. All right. So we're stepping inside the eighth floor. This used to be the ballroom, and again, we're converting this to an office space. So this will be more. Well, the two elevators that come up here, a little uh, reception area, probably a private office that way, and the bathrooms are kind of right where we're standing right now. And then the office usually will have uh, this entire open floor. be an incredible office space. Again, it's about 3,300 square feet. Just the windows and the views are pretty spectacular. And then we can also walk out to where this office user will have a private patio that overlooks these This is really cool. And this will also be done by March. All of it will be done by this March. This probably won't. The retail okay. spaces won't be fully occupied by March. That'll probably be closer to April and May. Okay. Terrace of the Prince Charles, again on the 8th floor overlooking Hay Street in downtown Bay Lake. So anything that's like on a roof belongs to this office building, whoever correct. whoever yep. leases this that space. That is correct, they'll have a spectacular space. You know, when I go back to kind of recruiting that talent, having that millennials down here, imagine having this as an office space, owning this space, be able to recruit talent to downtown Bay Lake. This will be a tremendous asset for that uh, great business. Proofs or anything put in place for the train for the tenants and stuff? You know, again, this is a concrete structure, so you have concrete walls, uh, okay. concrete floors between different apartments. Um, so acoustics aren't as big of an issue because we have that concrete structure to work with. And of course, we're adding in a bunch of insulation as well. Uh, the windows, though, are single pane windows, so it's the original and historic glass. There's a little bit of issues around that, but uh, as much insulation and acoustics we've been putting in the building, we don't anticipate any significant impact on people sleeping at night. 
Did y'all, uh, any problems with the windows? No, the we, we think we'll actually be able to preserve about 97% of the windows. Our goal was 90%, and the window, we should be able to hit about 97% as the last number I received from our team. And you would hope to preserve about, about 90%. Correct. So all the, most of the windows right now are down in Florida being repaired, and they'll be shipped back in crates. See, our team's already sanding and painting all the window frames, everything they can be able to put back in and install the windows. I think we have about 15 to 20 people here today just working on windows. And then is any of the downstairs retail space, restaurant space done, or, or are you on its way to getting done? Um, yeah, those spaces will probably be delivered around April or May. Okay. Uh, we have a coffee shop. Hopefully, we'll be able to announce next week um, a great tenant. So we'd love to let everyone know who that great tenant is and how excited to have them down here. And we're still making a lot of progress in our restaurants. Nothing else quite yet there. Okay. That's the exciting piece. Everyone wants to know who's the restaurants. Uh, yes. Who's the operator going to be? What are the restaurant names? They won't be chains. They'll all be local restaurants. We're working with a great restaurant operator. Um, so we're very excited to introduce two new concepts here, fresh food, healthy food, um, and it's a great team. I think I've shared earlier, our restaurant operator pays everyone a living wage and they get full benefits as well. That's very unique in the hospitality industry. So we're very excited to have them here in Fayetteville. Will the coffee shop be local as well, or is that gonna be a We'll chain? be announcing that next week. <laughs> so we should just be looking for announcements every week. <laughs> <laughs> Has interest exceeded what you all anticipated Absolutely. at this point? Yes. Interest is significantly higher than we could have imagined, particularly when we bought this back in January 2015. When we bought this building, we also bought uh, two acres of land next to us, a giant surface parking lot and the water fountain right there on Hay Street. You know, four years ago, I couldn't imagine that today we'd be talking about my team alone doing 65 million in the city of Fayetteville building a new baseball stadium. I mean, the interest in everything we're doing down here has been tremendous. For me, when I go around and talk to people, everyone just seems to be so much more excited and confident and excited about the community and being proud uh, that they're from Fable and living here and they're investing here. This was Raising your family. This was your idea. This was initially your idea. We've been working closely with the city of Fable, thinking about the best place to book the baseball stadium. My partner and I thought the baseball stadium going behind the Prince Charles and the land there instead of on Cat Site One could be a better investment, economic development investment for the city of Fable. The city of Fable has always viewed the baseball stadium as economic development investment. I told them if they were to build the baseball stadium, let's not just cross our fingers. You build it and hope they will come. You build it and hopefully people will invest around it. And I went to the city of Fayetteville and said, if you build it there, my team and I are committed today to invest at least $65 million, And that's where we are today. Last thing, as Tony Schiavone would say, you know, putting the baseball stadium disconnected from downtown is, you know, so fatal. Like, you know, putting the Crown Coliseum where it is. You know, how much private development has happened around And like there. J.P. Riddle Stadium. Exactly, the same why thing. Why is it way out there? Correct. You know, got to build out the core of downtown Fayetteville. When we think, again, some of the better communities here in Fayetteville, the larger communities in Fayetteville, they all have thriving, strong downtowns. You know, downtown Fayetteville used to not be that way. People always say, well, downtown Fayetteville is different. They have Duke University on one side of their downtown and Research Triangle Park on the other. Can't disagree with that at all. But downtown Durham in the 1980s and 1990s, no one went down there. People were getting shot on Main Street. Imagine yeah. shootings happening on da on Hay Street here in downtown Fayetteville. That was what was happening in downtown Durham on their Main Street. Today, downtown Durham is completely different. Yes, Duke's still there. Research Triangle Park's still there. We are extremely bullish on the potential here in downtown Fayetteville. And we know what we're doing. You know, For us, this isn't just the last thing we're looking to do here in Fayetteville. We have other plans here in downtown as well. And more importantly, we're hoping to see this other investment happening throughout downtown Fayetteville. For me, it's a rising tide lifts all boats. So anything we can do to help other people here in downtown Fayetteville is just a tremendous win. We want downtown Fayetteville to be thriving. You know, for us to be uh, successful, all of downtown Fayetteville has to be successful. So do you have anything to say about the arts theater that's been talked about yeah, coming I mean, down here? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, the community, particularly the county commissioners, have been talking a long time about kind of the future of the Crown Coliseum or FPAC. They were performing arts center they've been talking about. They've been bringing on different consultants thinking about the location of it. Uh, my opinion is they need to have it downtown. Uh, again, an investment like that will catalyze into a significant amount of private investment. I mean, the baseball stadium from the city of Fayetteville will, might, will invest at least $65 million. If they strategically think about the best location of that FPAC, I think we'll see a similar amount of private investment. 
great example I always point to is in downtown Durham, where you have the Durham Bulls Stadium, and next door to it is Deepak. Yeah. Deepak's one of the top five performing, top five grossing uh, performing arts center. It makes a lot of sense. You're able to get the two assets close to each other. They can build off of each other. Not only that, but you can share infrastructure. Um, when they built Deepak and uh, the Durham Bulls Baseball Stadium, they didn't have to build a brand new dedicated parking garage just for each of those facilities. They were able to share that infrastructure in the parking. And so is there a way to kind of think about where that asset could go closer to the baseball stadium? Could make a lot of sense. Again, Durham's been a tremendous model, and I think that's something uh, the county commissioners should be looking at as well. This is strictly going to be businesses and apartments? That is correct. None of the, none of, I know originally it seemed like people were talking about the possibility of, uh, or maybe this goes back to Chin, that he wanted to have also some hotel. That was back to Chin. So we're building a 119 room hotel next door. That'll be the highest end hotel in Fayetteville. And as I shared a little bit earlier, maybe we keep one or two of the apartments to look to Airbnb for the first year or two and provide the opportunity for people to come and stay in the Prince Charles. Uh, but long term, this building will be four retail establishments on the first floor, 59 apartments on floors two through seven, and then a great office user here on the eighth floor. Repeat that again. Long term, four? Four retail establishments on the first floor, mm -hmm. 59 apartments on floors two through seven, and then an office user here on the eighth floor. Why did you have to go down from the 61 apartments to 59? Uh, just the complexity of doing this corner infill. Uh, basically, there's a little donut hole behind where the elevator shafts used to be. Be able to drive our structure through the, all the floors all the way down and through the basement. We've realized, although we were planning it, just the complexity of actually logistically building that was just significant, simply more than we anticipated. So we removed that from the scope. Anything else you want to show us while we're here? No, we're just very excited to have everyone come on down. Hopefully do another tour in a couple more weeks when we have Sheetrock Hong on the seventh floor. And of course, we'll have everyone come on through when things are almost done and people are getting ready to move on in. Any plans of like grand openings or things like Not that? Not yet. Closer to that time. We'll talk about that. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, yeah. Jordan. Thank you all for your time.